joining us on stage will be uh, Vikas Sinha and uh, DJ Joshi. Thank you. Thank you, Priya. Well, the topic for today is uh, big data plus big iron equals big opportunities or big deal. Over the last um, couple of years, we have been hearing a lot of, from our customers about lots of requirements on the mainframe staff to help with big data projects. And uh, they talked about challenges. They talked about some opportunities that they see out there and uh, asked us how we could help them in those initiatives in, in that direction. So this session, we are going to talk about what we have heard from our customers, some of the challenges that we see out there, some of the opportunities uh, that, that, that exist, and how the products that we have today for CA database management can help our, our customers in that regard. So the agenda is uh, pretty simple. Uh, Vikas is going to talk about, um, from a higher level perspective, the mainframe uh, in the big data world. What, what are some of the things that people are talking about, the analysts, the customers, and we'll then dive into specifics of what we have heard our own customers in the last uh, few months talk about after, after we interviewed them around big data initiatives and requirements for uh, big data and what we could do to help them. So, so DJ. I wanted to share with you, you know, how my day started today. Okay. You know the stock we talked about earlier this morning? Yeah, yeah. It really hit that sweet spot. I just went and bought some. Pretty cool. Yeah, huh? you made a lot of money, I guess. I don't know about that. I think I'm, I'm in for something good. And you know, just as, as I was trying to do that, uh, my, my son called, I mean, he's at college, wanted some money. And I said, well, you know, I'm at the conference. I'm going to do that. I'm going to send you some money after I get back home. And, and this went just, you know, as I was telling him that, his mom calls, get the money to the son now, <laughs> right? So, so I, I do happen to have another app, right, from, from a bank. And I was able to go in there and, you know, 10 seconds I've done, you know, whatever money he wanted, I transferred it over. Pretty cool, pretty cool, right? And so, so, you know, I, I know a thing of two or two about you know mainframes, about databases, and I started putting things together, and I'm starting to get this whole app economy thing. You know, there is an app for every little thing that's out that you you would ever want to do, and as you're working with that, you're going and hitting a mainframe system. Absolutely. Right, and. This whole connection of mobile to mainframe has just made life so simple. All that data that has been lying in the mainframe systems is suddenly so accessible so easily. Uh, I'm amazed at you know, how some of these vendors that I work with are able to unleash the power of data that they have inside their mainframe systems. And if you start thinking through that, and you start looking at, well, what might be happening in these mainframe systems? as you're increasing the load, as you're adding more and more uh, you know, expectations from a customer point of view, what's going on there? Mm -hmm. Amazing, 450 billion transactions a day on the mainframe. Awesome, a few years ago, we couldn't have thought about that kind of a volume. The expectation from a customer is rising. You all have apps, right? You all have apps for airlines, hotels, banks, right? You, you name it, there is an app for everything, right? There's an app where I could go and you know, see where my son is at any point in time. I mean, he doesn't know I'm kind of you know, looking at him. Crazy, crazy stuff out there. That is increasing the expectations of a customer, right? Uh, if an app doesn't respond in a few seconds, I'm done with it. I'm deleting it, I'm moving on, finding the next one that does my job. In a recent IPO for a very, very prominent company, I'd say in the last 24, 48 months, there was a blip during the IPO process. You know, they called it system problems. 450, 500 million dollar, you know, uh, impact of that little blip in their IPO system. So the stakes are high. The stakes are very high. Uh, the critical data in this world, over 90% of it is residing on mainframes. And that's kind of increasing the complexity uh, of 
what's going on on the mainframe and how you manage that. Now, if you, if you kind of start looking at it, peel the onion, start looking at it, well, what's going on with my data? So you've got data on the mainframe. Companies are trying to react. Companies are trying to accelerate what they can do on mainframe. They are moving towards uh, you know, the, the DB2 analytics, analytic, analytics accelerator, if I can speak properly, sorry. Uh, they're kind of moving towards that. Managing that is a challenge. Any of your customers who are on IDAA can relate to that. Well, then, if it's not mainframe, what else do I have? This is the age of big data. Everybody is talking about Hadoop, Cassandra, Mongo, all these NoSQL data sources. The challenge there is the mainframe data is not readily accessible. You have it here, how do you get it over there, right? In addition to that, anything you do to, to process your data, move your data, there are additional costs on the mainframe system. You don't want to incur that cost, right? Now, well, if you can't do that, there are costs, there are struggles. Well, there's cloud, right? Everybody's talking about put it in the cloud. The challenges with, you know, uh, not increasing the cost on the mainframe still don't go away. So how do you do that? How do you get the data on the cloud, right? So in a, in a survey we did for uh, a large number of customers, the two challenges that everybody pointed out were really managing these, these large implementations uh, that they might have, how do you manage it? And the second challenge is even if they got to the cloud, if they got to the big data environment, they are in this heterogeneous you know, uh, mode where they might have Hadoop, they might have various flavors of Hadoop, Cassandra, uh, MongoDB, all of these data sources. Well, how do you manage those? Uh, so that's kind of where everybody's minds are. Uh, so DJ, you are the product manager for data management at CA. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell us something about you know what you see as the obstacles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after we um, the, the slide that Vikas showed earlier about the survey of a broad range of customers, uh, we thought we should go and actually talk to customers one on one, spend time with them, have half day workshops, and we talked to a good couple dozen customers about where their mainframe is in their overall IT strategy, where does big data fit in, and what are the kinds of demands that their main frame staff today are experiencing that originate outside of the mainframe. So uh, th there are many times when the mainframe DBAs are asked to provide information in a very secure, efficient manner for big data projects. There's a big Hadoop initiative going on, there's a big Cassandra project going on, and those projects are essentially looking at structured data for, for profitability analysis, for customer segmentation analysis, and so on. So whether you talk to a financial services customer or a retail customer or a manufacturing customer, everybody says, how do I get this data out? How do I get this data out in an efficient manner using the most optimal means? So that's challenge number one. They don't know how exactly to do that. Um, and it, it's a lot of work in order to do that if you, if you don't know which route to take. Second, there's a lot of complexity out there, whether it's moving the data, whether it's DB2 data, vSAM, IDMS, Datacom, or any other data that sits on the mainframe, moving it outside of the mainframe is one. But then, when you talk about the big data technologies themselves, many of the mainframe staff, obviously, are not aware of the intricacies of those technologies, but if you ask the big data staff as well, there's so many options, those technologies are new, there's lots of things that people don't know, and there's, there's immense complexity out there. The third angle is the security, compliance, governance aspect. So the mainframe data is a very sensitive, a database is very sensitive uh, information, customers, products, company information, and you want to protect that. There's lots of uh, issues out there, data breaches, um, that have heightened the sense of awareness and security. So security, governance, compliance is the third challenge. People need to make sure anything they do with respect to mainframe data is highly secure, highly compliant. And the last but not the least is when we talk to the mainframe folks directly, the mainframe management, uh, mainframe head of mainframes or application, uh, they tell us that on one hand, when it comes to mainframe staff, the big concern, the big risk is retiring workforce. If you need a lot of experienced DBAs to move data from mainframe um, to, to Hadoop or the other technologies, 
then that's a huge hurdle right there because many of the experienced um, folks are already busy with a number of projects, a number of initiatives on the mainframe itself. It's very hard to get their time. Second, after the next two, three, four, five years when the experienced staff uh, retires, then they want their newer generation DBAs to be able to manage those initiatives moving forward. On the other hand, when you talk about big data, big data administration, any single company that we have talked to on an average has three, four big data technologies, whether it's different distributions of Hadoop, Cassandra, MongoDB, NoSQL databases, or enterprise data warehouses, Greenplum, Ter Teradata, and so on. And if you, if you have to manage those systems, whether it's cluster management, node management, job management, and if you need a system administrator for each, now those skills are not very easy to come by. So even outside of the mainframe when it comes to big data, managing those, the infrastructure is another challenge. So given all those challenges, customers always ask us for very specifics. And putting that in, in, the, in the CA um, solution, CA database management context, customers are specifically asking us for four major things. Number one, we have database administration tools, we have performance tools, we have utilities. What is the best way to take the data out? Do we use utilities? Do, do you have any product today that can do that for us easily? And what's, what are the things on your roadmap? Number two, we, have, we are also using another big data technology out there that is not the typical Hadoop technology. It's an IBM technology called IDAA. So it's a DB2 analytics accelerator. Now we use it for query acceleration, but we also use it for analytics on our big data, which is sitting on the mainframe. How are you going to simplify and make it easy for us to manage uh, those implementations? Number three, we, we have lots of initiatives that we want to undertake, which are analytical initiatives, but we are restricted today because if you try to do all of that on the mainframe, from a storage perspective, from a, a, a MIPS perspective, we cannot afford to put a lot of cost or a lot of expense on the mainframe. And number four, as I mentioned, we have lots of big data technologies out there. Can you help us just provide a single portal that can help us manage and, and make sense of all these different distributions and implementations from a single uh, uh, pane of glass? So DJ, it looks like you, know, you just talked about accelerating all the, the queries and analytics on the mainframe. You also talked about moving and managing data off the mainframe into a Hadoop cluster mm -hmm. of some kind, right? You spoke about uh, cloud, mm -hmm. analytics on the cloud. It's pretty cool. So what do we have going in all of these areas? Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. And that's essentially the question that um, all the big banks that we spoke with in, um, in Europe just recently, as well as some of the financial services and retail companies that we spoke with last month, um, they asked us, so great, you understand the challenges. What do you offer today? What are you going to do about this tomorrow? So very similar to Vikas's slide where we talk about the challenges under what we have on ZOS, what we have for Hadoop, and what we have for cloud today. We, we essentially put the solutions that we have today in three buckets. Number one, on the, on the Z platform itself, the solution or solutions that make it easier for you to leverage your IDAA investment, and second, simplify the implementation of your IDAA, uh, whether you're implementing it for the first time or moving from experimentation to production. Number two, on the Hadoop side of things, one, move the data independent of what Hadoop distribution or big data platforms I have out there. Move the data independent of whether it's vSAM data, DB2 data, IDMS, or datacom data. So that falls in the second bucket in the middle. And on the third bucket, be able to provide and help customers with their initiatives around analytics by leveraging cloud. So leverage all the data from the mainframe, but utilize all the horsepower off of the mainframe, providing the benefits to the mainframe customers and, and, and providing a win-win situation. So I know you've been working on this for a long time, DJ. You want to tell us about some of the products that'll help us achieve some of these goals? Yes, yes. So I'll, I'll go by um, each pillar over here. So the product, um, 
the first capability under the first pillar uh, is a product that almost all of our DB2 cu tools customers own, and that is RC Query. So I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but release 18 and release 19 of DB2 tools provides a lot of capabilities that help our customers um, mo easily administer and manage their IDA uh, environments. Whether it's a single environment, multiple en environments, they can move from mainframe management to IDA management through similar, very familiar uh, RC query screens. So a quick example, quick snapshot is the screen over here. You can look at your table, table space, object information that's purely mainframe, and then you can easily move from there to what tables I have accelerated, what tables, uh, uh, table spaces do these belong to? Well, can I, can I start the acceleration process? Can I stop the acceleration process? Can I ping the IDA server? And, and so on. People can do all that through their RC query screens today. And that is in uh, release 19 as well as release 18 of the uh, RC query product. So can you actually get the data if you wanted to off to a Hadoop platform? Yes, yes. Um, within RC query itself, you can move the data from mainframe to IDAA. Yeah. But we also have a product that um, is called VStorm, CAV Storm. And that is a product that is pretty cool. It, it, it doesn't care what's on the left-hand side and what's on the right-hand side, if I may. If you have six, seven, eight, dozens of data sources on the left-hand side, which, is, which are your source uh, data sources on the mainframe, we have lots of customers um, that I spoke with, many big banks out there that obviously have a lot of data on DB2, but they also have lots of data sitting in vSAM file structures. There are some customers that also own IDMS and Datacom uh, databases, and they are looking at one single solution that can help move the data, and, and they can choose what data sets, when, how, how often they want to refresh, and the tool should allow them to pick the data of their choice, allow them to build rules, and move it to a target of their choice. So VStorm today allows customers to do that, and on the left-hand side, again, take your pick, Many customers go for Hadoop today when it comes to moving mainframe data to, uh, to uh, uh, big data for uh, any initiatives. But also, um, you know, as I mentioned, enterprise data warehouses, GreenPlum or Teradata or the NoSQL databases, Cassandra or MongoDB, VStorm can do it all. Above that, the other concern that many people have while moving data is, is not just moving the data efficiently and securely, but not consuming the MIPS not consuming too much storage on the mainframe. VStorm does that by allowing customers to move the data in a very efficient streaming fashion and leverage non-mainframe um, data assets, non-mainframe resources, so that the MIPS consumption just for data movement purposes is very minimal. All right. So do you have a screenshot of the product you want to show us? Pretty cool. And that's a VStorm product today. Yeah. Um, again, it's just one example. So it's it's um, if you if you have been exposed to the uh, data movement technologies, people would call them ETL, extract, transform, and move, uh, load. But this is ELT, where we extract and we load the information. So it's efficient. It doesn't consume uh, MIPS on, on the mainframe, and then any transformation happens outside of the mainframe. So that's a very intelligent way of giving the data movement capabilities and not, not consuming too many precious mainframe resources. So, so you just, it was interesting, you know, you, you said VStorm helps you move data from a variety of mainframe data sources to a variety of sources on the big data side. You flavors of Hadoop, you've got flavors of, you know, the NoSQL data sources, enterprise data warehouses. Did I just trade off one problem for another? I'm like sitting on this mess of multiple distributions. I've got this you know, team of data scientists who want to be on Apache Hadoop, We've got the marketing guys who want to be on Cassandra. Everyone has, an, has their own need, and I've, I've ended up with you know, five, six different distributions of you know, big data, you know, Hadoop, NoSQL technologies. Yeah. How do I manage that? Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's uh, a very good way of, of thinking about, well, if you support and be flexible with you know, any targets and any sources, can customers just go and pick 
you know, any type of Hadoop distributions and no Cassandra, no SQL databases. Actually, the problem existed even before we offered uh, the VStorm solution. Uh, the VStorm solution provides flexibility because people already have those number of targets out there, and they use them for a variety of uh, reasons. You know, Cassandra has certain um, positives, uh, benefits over a, a MongoDB distribution and so on. So assuming that customers are going to need those variety of big data technologies out there, VStorm allows you to be flexible and move the data um, to any of those uh, targets. On the other hand, our, the big data control center product um, that we have today, and, and that's being, um, um, that's being um, exposed in, in the incubation area here, um, that allows you to provide customers a single pane of glass through which they can look at Hadoop 1, Hadoop 2, Hadoop 3, Cassandra, MongoDB, Greenplum, Teradata in one place, but not from a, a, an analytics perspective, but from the, the perspective of a system administrator, someone, application development person, someone who wants to look at the jobs, someone who wants to look at the various clusters in Hadoop, the various nodes, and be able to tell what's going wrong, is everything okay? You know, are there things that I need to tune? Are there things that I need to let the, the Hadoop specialist know about? So many customers are trying to use those technologies to support lines of business or businesses, and this allows the line of business to be responsible or to be in charge of being able to monitor the various areas in, in the big data technologies that, that apply to them. And you don't need to always have 10 Hadoop administrators or you know, multiple different big data administrators out there. And for your one project, you don't have to ping 20 people, but you can see and manage your system from one, one place. So it's, it's, it's interesting how you talked about accelerating data on the mainframe, about you know, moving data and managing it in a distributed, in a Hadoop distributed environment. I'm running a DB2 shop on the mainframe. Help me, you know, bring it, bring it back home to the mainframe. That's that's my bread and butter, right? Mm -hmm. So I still need to manage uh, the costs of my data center, mm -hmm. of my DB2 uh, setup that I have. Mm -hmm. I still need to manage, you know, the MIPS and the storage on my databases. Mm -hmm. So help me, help help tie this whole world that you've painted, you know, for me back into how is it useful on the mainframe? So uh, it, it's a very interesting area, and many customers uh, actually at, at the booth itself here, as well as at the other um, databases booth, many customers ask us um, about analytics. And again, it's a simple question. What's your analytics strategy? Um, and that's for all of CA as well as for databases itself. Many customers are using products like Detector if they are CA DB2 tools customers. Um, there are other customers who are thinking of using Detector. They might be using other products. Um, so they have a lot of information that is captured by these monitors. So I'm not sure how many of you actually use CADB2 tools today. How many of you are using the, the performance products from um, uh, DB2? But what the Detector product does today, or you know, what the equivalent IBM or other products would do out there, is they would capture information about what's going on. For example, Detector today captures information about each SQL statement, whether it's static or dynamic, and it captures it at the statement level. It tells you what's the, you know, what, what SQL statements, how much time are they taking, the groups of applications, what's the average time that they're taking, and so on. And if anything blips, if anything is taking a lot of resources, then it's going to show that as rank number one when you look at the Detector screens. And that is good if you have time to look at the detector screen and if you constantly follow what's going on. But many customers, again, brings, brings us back to two things. One is we don't have the time and the resources to do that. And second, we don't want our experienced DBAs to be involved in that monitoring process. We want the system to take that workload off of our shoulders, off of the shoulders of experienced DBAs, and provide us with means where not only we know what's going wrong, not only do we know, for example, what's the most expensive statement, but it can also help us train the system 
tell the system what's normal, and then analyze the actual performance and help us identify deviations or tell us when things really go wrong over uh, an extended period of time. So no false alarms, yeah. but things that draw our attention to real problems in performance. On the other hand, many customers have told us that they have been trying to build information or, or system warehouses where they are trying to take the data from detector, build a historical data warehouse, and analyze the trend in that warehouse to be able to help, help performance analysts in, in their company, DBAs, understand, well, over the same period last quarter or last year or last uh, uh, beginning of this year, my performance trend was here. This was my baseline. Today my baseline is here. So what went wrong? Did my volumes really increase? Did my applications really you know, uh, suffer the, the degradation because of some real business reasons? Or really, am I not tuning my, my systems properly? So the slow creep from where you were historically to where you are right now, that many times goes unnoticed because there are many monitors out there that help you look at last week, last quarter, last month, but the monitors don't help you look at over a larger period of history, am I really trending in the right direction? Am I really you know, moving away from what is supposed to be normal? So the performance analytics product, today it's, uh, it's uh, pre-release. Uh, we are actually trialing it. So this is a product that's not GA, but we have, we have many customers who have signed up for being on trial. We actually had one today that is very excited about going on trial. What they want to do is move their detector data from the mainframe. It's just a simple PDF that you apply on the mainframe, and that's, that lets you move the data from the mainframe to the CA cloud or hosting facility. So you can build as much history as you want without taking storage on your mainframe. Number two, you can help the system identify, and I can just show you a quick screenshot, help the system identify what's normal. So in this case, you'll see the, the, the light trends. Those are the normal trends. And then that's the, ba the baseline, the green highway over there. Then it helps you look at the deviations over a period of time, and it allows you to specify the period of, periods of time. It allows you to specify the thresholds or, or tolerances where if the performance falls in those bands, you're fine. But if the performance goes consistently over those bands, if the standard deviation is consistently outside the range, then send an email alert to, to my administrator or, or draw their attention to, to those problem areas. Second, it allows customers to view this information by application, by plans, by packages, by SQL, uh, static SQL or dynamic SQL, oftentimes you are not able to get that granular information when you're analyzing uh, your detector data or any other monitor data. So this product, Performance Analytics for DB2, allows customers to do that. And all of that through a simple web interface, um, all of that accessing the cloud uh, information, if you have the cloud data updated every hour, every 15 minutes, however often you want to update, this data will access the cloud uh, analytics real time. So it draws your attention. Many customers have told us, um, and especially financial services folks who have to manage lots of transactions, heavy transactions during the day, they say, even if you save me four hours, if you can detect a problem we detect the problem today by various other means at noon or at 11 o'clock. It's too late. If you help me detect that at 6 o'clock in the morning, you are saving me huge headaches. And this product does exactly that. It saves you, at the very least, a few hours. It, it gives you advanced information. And that's what, from a marketing perspective, we would say proactive performance management. Right now, this product looks at three key metrics, get pages, um, elapsed time, and CPU usage, but it's built in such a way that as customers start using it, and as customers start giving us feedback about what other metrics they care about, whether these are SQL performance metrics or subsystem uh, uh, parameters, buffer pool parameters, we can easily expand the coverage of the analytics for these products over, um, over any history of, of uh, um, uh, so th this data particular, collected. This, this example, right, of this product, kind of, uh, I, was trying to, I was trying to relate to something in my personal life. And I was reminded of, you know, a car that I bought a few years ago, 
And I, I bought the car because they said it's going to give me 55 miles per gallon. Right? Three years, four years down the road, I'm running at 35 miles a gallon. And I've done all the maintenance along the way. I've done you know, oil changes, everything that broke, ran to the dealer, got it fixed right away. But you know what? Over time, the mileage does go down. And all I knew, or actually I did not know, was I was putting more and more money in for gasoline, uh, more than what I had thought I would be putting in. This seems something like that, where you might be incurring a greater cost, and you don't even know that. That's exactly right. It, it also can be akin to uh, your health metrics. You know, you may not know that your blood pressure or your, uh, uh, your cholesterol has not been, you know, that, that good lately, but if you compare this year versus last year, you're fine, but if you compare over five years, you might notice that your, your health metrics have so really gone down. So we could have folks stop by and sign up for a trial today, right? If they wanted to. Absolutely. If you, right. if you have detector today, you can sign up for uh, performance analytics today. You can start using it ASAP. So kind of pulling it all together, let's see if I got it. Right? So doing amazing amount of acceleration of the stuff that you want to keep on the mainframe and IDA. You're doing uh, some stuff with moving the data off the platform. If you wanted to get off the platform into big data sources, you're going to help manage some of those big data sources. We're going to be able to do some analytics in the cloud. Did I summarize it well? I mean, it, is that where yes. we are headed with our with the mainframe data, big data strategy here? Yes, yes. Um, I would um, summarize uh, similarly, but in a slightly different yep. way. I would say, for those of you who have CA um, DB2 tools today and want to leverage um, the, the CA capabilities, um, there's products like RC Query that help you on your IDA implementations. Um, for those of you who have, who, who may or may not have CA DB2 tools, but who have lots of data sitting on the mainframe today and have a need to move the data off of the mainframe for any, any reason um, to a variety of platforms, whether they are the traditional Hadoop type platforms or whether they are the older enterprise data warehouse type of platforms, then we have the CFE Storm product that, that allows you to move data independent of the source, independent of the targets. For those of you who already have big data technologies in place, whether they are experiment, in the experimentation stage or in the production stage, and you want a very simple, easy way of monitoring the, the system performance and alerting uh, uh, users when, when something goes wrong, um, we have the uh, Big Data Control Center, we call it B CABDCC, that allows you to, to simplify your management and not have a need for multiple uh, system administrators just for monitoring your, your uh, big data uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and um, last but not the least, for those of you who are very keen on optimizing your DB2 performance, um, today if you're detector users, tomorrow you may be using any, any data source out there, DB2, Datacom, IDMS. You, if you want a technology that allows you to move from reactive analysis, just responding to alerts and, and fire drills, to a technology that allows you to uh, leverage the latest analytical and statistical techniques and draw your attention to problems before they occur. So do more proactive performance management than the performance analytics for DB2 or DB2 performance analytics product uh, would allow you to do that. So today we, we have lots of things in process that help you with your big data projects, whether they're, they're called big data uh, projects or they're called data warehousing projects, it doesn't matter. There's technologies that can help you today. So if you want to learn more, we definitely have lots of uh, detailed demos and, and detailed information um, at, at the uh, demo parts just uh, next to the mainframe uh, stage. I think, I think we actually have, uh, we have a VStorm booth so people can stop by and take a look at it. Correct. We do have the performance analytics for DB2 product live running in the booth. And we have the big data control center product running live at the big data booth. So I, I would encourage uh, you all to stop by and, and uh, test it out. Uh, Correct. And what we have been doing in product management, uh, we would like to hear from you. So whether or not you get uh, time today to come by the booths, we would definitely like your opinion, your ideas, 
So there are various avenues for you to, to help us help you. Uh, on one hand, there's a CA Communities website where if you're using certain CA products, don't be shy. Just put your enhancements, ideas, questions up there. Uh, either we directly can help you or there are other customers that can help you respond uh, to, to your questions and, and your ideas. There are ideas for enhancements that we like to poll customers. So if, if you have certain ideas, and those ideas are on the CA community's website, it's a great thing because now you have other customers voting on those ideas. And you can see that for yourself as well. That helps us prioritize those, uh, 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 those capabilities in our product development process. On the other hand, when we are working on those enhancements, we would like to have customers participate give a preview of what we are working on to customers through sprint reviews. We follow the agile development. So sprint reviews, our customers can actually start using those products early on in, in their sandboxes or test environments and be our validation customers. So you have an opportunity to be not early adopters, but people who can give us early feedback and influence our, our, our product direction or roadmap. There are also other um, uh, avenues for us to reach out to you and for, us, uh, for you to reach out to us. If you have a need where you think there's a broader uh, a set of people, DBAs or otherwise, who would like to spend a few hours, half a day, for a workshop to exchange ideas, to show you what we have on the roadmap, what ideas we are hearing from other customers, and you want, us to, uh, uh, you want to provide us with your uh, 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 feedback on those, we'll be more than happy to spend time on site with, with your group of people as well. So we would like to engage our customers as much as possible. So don't be shy. If you don't have time today, uh, that's fine. There are very uh, uh, many avenues for you to reach out to us. But if you do stop by today, we would be more than happy to answer any questions that you have on any of those technologies. All right. So that's it uh, for now. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, your time.